My name is Danny DeLulo, and we're here at the Cambridge Los Angeles show in West Hollywood. And I'm here with Sean David Christensen with his movie, The Duel. Let's take a look at a clip. And Dad said, listen, I, I can see you've seen these knives, and here's what I want to talk to you about. Duffy, this, this is for you. There's, a, there's been a problem. I think we can all sense it. There's, there's just there's too many men in the house. There's not enough room for the both of us. One of us has to go. It's not going to be me, I can tell you that much. So I would like to challenge you to a duel. I would like you to take any knife you want. We'll go down to the basement, have it out like two, two, two gentlemen, and one of us will come up. Please, Duffy, choose whichever knife you'd like. Sure. Congratulations on your film. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this really powerful documentary. And, uh, but for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. So The Duel is based on a true story mm -hmm. by Lily Taylor, mm -hmm. who uh, probably is best known for her work on you know, film and TV and uh, for many years. Um, and it's a true story based on her father's struggle with mental illness, which was um, illustrated by this true story she told on the Risk podcast, mm -hmm. which is produced by Kevin Allison. And the, um, the whole uh, conceit of the podcast, which is where the story originated from, is uh, true stories you thought you'd never dare share. So this was a story that she had been workshopping and telling at these, um, these live shows. And um, uh, it's basically taken from her childhood experience. And uh, I tried to do my best to illustrate it in a imaginative, uh, creative way, best I could and really let her, uh, her truth speak through the images. It's really, it was really powerful. Like I, I, I you know, you, you're left not knowing where this is gonna end and then you, you know, I, I couldn't help just because how you, uh, how, how you uh, made the film, I felt like I was a child, like her going through this journey. Yeah. Uh, it was from a very, because obviously she was experienced when she was young. Um, so incredible, uh, but when was the point or when was the discussion with you and Lily that we want to make this into a film? When did that happen? So what I did is I got in touch with, with Kevin through the mm -hmm. podcast. And I, when I originally first heard her story, I was drawing at my, at, 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 at my desk. I listened to podcasts while I draw. Mm -hmm. And her voice came on and I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's Lily. Because like, she just has a, has a recognizable voice that I was, that I was used to hearing. And I'm, I'm drawing a, a picture, and then as she goes deeper into this, this story and these memories, uh, my pencil just freezes above the drawing I was doing. I, I couldn't stop, I couldn't finish the drawing because I was just completely um, engrossed in this true story. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much immediately after I heard her story, I put down my pencil and I send off an email to, to Kevin. And I asked him if this idea would, would be one that he'd be receptive to. Mm -hmm. I said, I work in documentary, I do experimental, mm -hmm. uh, where it's you know, like fragments and sense memories, close-ups mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and he said, well, I'll, I'll ask her. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was honored to be put in touch with her. Mm -hmm. And she was so incredibly generous with her story and her time. We spoke on the phone and I said, I, I feel I feel so passionate about telling the story honestly mm -hmm. and delicately as I can, being true to your to your experience, because mm -hmm. it's something that I think, you know, I mean, me personally, um, I mean, her father has the same diagnosis that I have. You know, we're both mm -hmm. bipolar, and mm -hmm. it's something that millions of Americans yeah. struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. That's and right. I said, I, I really feel like this is an important story that needs to be told. Yeah with honesty and clarity. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she said, well, that's great, you know, and she just, uh, she was so generous with, with her life. And I, 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 uh, I just tried my best to, to make it something that was personal to me yeah. as well as her. Yeah. Well, you, you certainly did. You're extremely talented, Sean. I love, I love, cause I know that you're obviously a great story. You know, you love doing things in storyboards. And I, I, I absolutely love that. Thank you. Um, and, uh, not to mention just that, 
What I loved about the style of your documentary and your, your, your vision as a documentary filmmaker is that you did kind of almost give us like visual riddles and, 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 and we were like working things out and working things through. And you sent our imaginations wild, which is just great when you can go into the scope of what you're trying to create and, you know, kind of through the visuals work out what people's feelings emotionally, um, you know, what's going on in a particular situation. Also, you know, aside from, you know, all of that, which is, you know, just your natural talent. How, how important is it to kind of also talk about this, these particular subjects? Because, you know, I think we've, we're still in work in progress about mental health and all these different issues. Like, was that something that was important to you as a, as a filmmaker and as a person to kind of like, you know, let's, let's talk about this. These things do actually happen. This is not something that doesn't go on, but we may not know about it. Absolutely. Um, it's interesting that you brought up that my visual style is kind of like a series of riddles. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you're diagnosed with an illness, especially at a young age mm -hmm. or at a stage in your life when you're trying to figure out what this riddle means, what this diagnosis means, mm -hmm. I mean, it can, it, can feel like, um, it can feel like it's too much or it's embarrassing or it's, uh, it's just uh, beyond your control. Mm -hmm. And it's not. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's manageable. It's something mm -hmm. that you can make a part of your life, but not something that defines Yes, your exactly, life. yeah. And it's, you know, because so often, you know, you, you get labeled, you know, yeah. you get labeled as crazy, mm -hmm. or you get labeled as, you know, oh, he's wacky, or, you know, and it, it stays behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you brought up something interesting at, at the screening, at the Q&A, you said, you know, uh, to, like, never be afraid to talk to your friend. Yeah. Uh, to check in. That's right. Say, like, hey, are you okay? Um, you know, because for years this was something that I didn't share about myself. Yeah. It felt, it felt embarrassing. It felt yeah. weird. And then, you know, uh, it felt like I, maybe I was um, eliciting for, you know, sympathy. But, yeah. But no, I mean, people, I think what we're seeing right now in documentary, especially in like movies, is people are hungry for real stories. Yep. Real emotions, real connections. Mm -hmm. So the more honest you can be with yourself. Mm hmm and if you're so lucky to do so in an artistic realm, like if you're able to illustrate that with a film or mm -hmm. a song, that communicates, you know, a part of your life that you want to share, um, I think I think the world is better for that. It's better for like transparency and honesty. I think that's one of the statements to never forget and always remember. I think that's I think that's what you just said is 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 extremely important. And we do have the fortunate perspective of utilizing our our experiences and, and our feelings and put it in a creative light and realm and there's nothing more powerful than moving an image to display that um what, what how do you feel you know obviously going through the journey of creating that whole thing then having a new a new filmmakers la in front of a new audience how does it feel how does that you feel, feel for you feel for lily how does it feel to have that suddenly out there and up and the whole world gets to see it it's um it's a privilege. It's, mm. it's a privilege to be able to be given the um, the trust mm -hmm. and the respect and generosity to share someone's life, mm -hmm. especially um, in a film, uh, because you're creating like this, like this, this version of reality that exists for like a you know like a portion of time, and you know it's up on the screen and it feels like it's um. It's like this world you've created, and you feel like this this responsibility. Like, oh, I hope I'm, I hope I'm portraying it right. I hope I'm being, you know, gracious to, uh, you know, to the story. And um, to do so at a place like New Filmmakers LA, which has always been just um, uh, a very nurturing destination for filmmakers in around the world to share their stories. Thank it's, you. That touches the heart. It does. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. You know, it's it's a great destination for filmmakers to have their work seen and mm. and uh and honored and you know and it's and every time i get to show the film in a festival screening the mm -hmm. film becomes new again yeah it's not a great it's not a wondrous feeling yeah yeah because every audience is different everyone's going to take your film differently it everyone's going to you know it's it's some people it's very very personal to as well and i i think the most beautiful thing is that even if we've not been through an experience that ourselves, we may know someone. And I think when you can create a film that, like we said just earlier, when it alters you and, and let's communicate, let's talk. You know, maybe there's people going through things that we don't necessarily know what they're going through, but they're having a really difficult time and communication is the key, isn't it? Yeah. And, and just because you might not understand what they're going through fully doesn't mean that it's not 
real mm -hmm. and has an impact in their life and has consequences. So like just because you don't understand something, don't mm -hmm. you know, don't abstract it. Don't yeah. don't turn it into a puzzle. Like yeah. conf confront it or address it like it's it's a real part of someone's life. You know? Because uh, I don't think that, you know, we don't live our lives just by ourselves. Like our life is lived by by us and it's carried by our mothers and fathers and everybody who's involved in our life. It's something that's shared like this 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 burden of, of life, you know. That's right. Uh, what, what was what was the biggest challenge you had in making it? Was there? Well, in making this film, uh, the unique challenge was uh, I was working from Lily's voice, and I sort of approached it as you know a like a song. So she was like the vocalist in the song, and I was trying to build the rhythm and the instrumentation underneath her voice with the images. So what I did with this film, and the challenge was to create. Um, a narrative world that was cohesive, that was supportive of Lily's story, but didn't invade the spaces in between her words and feel like it was, um, I was like editorializing her experience, or I was kind of wrestling that perspective away from her and making it like a film about me, or this was my take on it. So it was trying to find a, a nice interplay between um, her words and trusting when to sustain on a shot and not busy it with a lot of cuts and just sort of let her voice have that natural power. Because I think when you have, and this is true with lots of documentaries, if you have a story that's just naturally uh, rich with detail and compelling to listen to, uh, I mean, uh, just trust that. Trust yeah. that power. And don't try to busy and editorialize and make it like this, um, you know, uh, sort of frantic uh, visual yeah. thing. You know, yeah. I know. Well, when I when I watched it, and when you guys watch it, you're, you know, you're you're just all you 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 hear a voice, and you 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 uh, you know observing the visuals, and you're working out the feelings and the story. And so yeah, I it worked. As long as it worked, it was great. Um, what, what's next for you, Sean? So right now, I'm just I'm uh, doing lots of writing. Um, that's kind of like my uh, the, the kind of discipline I always, I always fall back to. It's like my natural resting state. So I'm always writing um, nonfiction from personal experiences. I'm trying to craft you know, stories and narratives from just details about life. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing lots of that right now. Well, you're very talented. We love your work. We can't wait to see much more of it. And congratulations on the jewel. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and here we go and on we go. So thank you very much. Well, and uh, thank you. I felt like we just had a mentor, mentor session as well for life. So yeah. that, that came for free. So I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>